Folks, our plant babies are growing up right before our eyes here, and they're really starting to burst at the seams, outgrowing their current seed cells. And so today, I'm gonna to share with you five tips for potting our babies up into a larger temporary home until it is warm enough for them to be transplanted into the garden outside. So folks, as we begin to dive in here, if you have any questions at any point, please leave those down in the comments because I start my day with a nice warm coffee answering every single question that we get on YouTube. So leave the questions down there and I'll get a response to you super, super quickly. Now the first tip when it comes to potting up our babies is simply to start them in a larger pot. So I really encourage you to use these three inch seed cells instead of say a one inch plug. The reason behind that is because if we were in those one inch plugs, we're going to need to pot them up around day 14, day 21. And if we're starting a little bit earlier, then we're probably gonna have to do a second round of potting up. So by simply starting in a three inch seed cell, we completely eliminate that first need of kind of wrestling around with the root zone, disturbing the plant and potting it up. We're right around day 35 right now, and we're just now doing our first round of potting up. So starting with a larger seed cell is going to just basically save you a step and disturb the plant even less. Second tip for potting up our plant babies is the evening before you pot them up, give them a nice big drink of water. What this is going to do is ensure that the soil is nice and moist, and that's going to allow the roots to open up, move around more easily, and be less likely to break than if they were really, really dry. So now that the babies have gotten a good drink of water, it's time to start moving them into a larger pot here. And the purpose of potting up is ultimately to give them more space to continue to grow, to spread their roots. And the reason why we want to do that is because if we leave them in something small for too long, they are going to get root bound and potentially begin to feel really stressed. If they feel that they're running out of space, they're going to shift from producing foliage growth, which we want, to producing flowers to try and pass along their seed for future generations because they're feeling like I might be at the end of my journey. I've ran out of space in here. So we want to get them into something a little bit larger. So to go about doing that, all that I'm going to do is fill the new temporary home up about halfway with seedling mix. Now that we've got that filled up, the next thing to do is give it a good number of turkey bases of water. I'm thinking like four or five here. And then you're going to grab your plant baby. I like to weave my fingers through the stems, pop it upside down and open it up. And as we can see, there are roots all over the place, really looking beautiful and strong, but also getting a little bit tight in there. So what I wanna do is just gently massage it to begin to loosen those up. I like to keep one hand on the bottom, spin it around, and as we see, it begins to loosen up. Alrighty, now all that I'm going to do is place that into its new temporary home. And a fun fact with tomatoes is that you can plant those ones really, really deeply because new roots will grow off of the stem that is beneath the surface. And then we're just going to backfill the surrounding area with soil. And now I'm gonna pinch off a couple of these lower leaves just to open up a little bit of space. Totally optional, that part. Okay, then I like to gently compact just to hold everything in place. And lastly, another big drink of water. So another kind of four to five turkey base here. Beautiful, take a look at that. It has tons of room to be growing now. And if you're wondering why I'm not thinning out at this point, if anything were to happen in the potting up process, well now I'm not dependent on only one seedling. I can allow them to continue to grow push off that process of thinning them out. They've got enough space to be totally fine. And then I can thin them out in seven days and 14 days or even later when I transplant them into the garden. Now, if you're wanting to be a little bit more dramatic with it, then the fourth tip is for you. And that is to rip it in half and to put them into two separate pots. So in this particular instance, I'm going to grab two new larger temporary homes and I'm gonna fill each of these up halfway. And then I'm gonna grab my plant baby the exact same way, upside down, beautiful root zone. And so now, rather than gently loosening them, I'm actually going to go right down the middle, two on the left, two on the right, and just give her a good little rip. And now we're gonna plant each of these into separate pots. And as you can see, I still have two of them in there so that if anything happens to one of them, well then the other plant will still live on and survive, so we're all good. And then same thing, backfill with our worm casting seedling mix. And one interesting note there is I don't actually do any fertilizing at this point. I just use the worm casting seedling mix. I found that it has enough nutrients in there for it to grow big and strong. 
and I actually don't want it to grow too much underneath the grow lights or else I'll run out of space. Alrighty, take a look. Babies are looking real nice in their new home. So step number five here is to now pop them back underneath the grow lights to hang out for 12 to 13 hours per day. Perfect. And so our plant babies are back underneath their grow lights. And so all that we need to do from here is let them continue to hang out underneath the grow lights 12 to 13 hours per day, moving the grow light up as needed or utilizing too, which I really enjoy. And the one big change is just going to be keeping an eye on how much to be watering. We've got a lot more seedling mix in here now, so we need to be adding more water in so it can spread all throughout that potentially increasing to three, four, five turkey base every three to four days. And so what I wanna do just to make sure that these babies are going to be adjusting to their new home nicely is fast forward about a week for a quick check-in to see how they're doing. Alrighty, so it is seven days later here. I wanna head downstairs to check in on how the plant babies are that we potted up. Let's take a look. Oh, baby. All right, so that is what we call thriving. And as we can see, the tomato babies are literally growing above the grow light at this point, which we're going to talk about today. So all that I want to do is make a quick observation on our tomato babies, quick observation on our kale babies, and then chat through what we do over the coming week here. So to get started, let's take a look at our tomatoes. And what we can see is that all four of them that we potted up into this larger pot are really thriving and growing well. And so the one thing we need to do kind of straight away is just get the entire plant underneath the light. There's two ways that we could go about doing that, either raise the grow light up or move it under the second grow light, which is already higher up. And then the other piece is that all four of the plants have successfully made it from the potting up, which is what I anticipated to have happening. And so you could begin to thin some of these out if you liked. And this is why with our kale babies, what I like to do is actually split them in half. Half. So let's take a look at how those ones did when we split them. And so as we can see here, all four are doing really, really well. So we didn't lose any of them or anything along those lines when we did that motion of ripping them in half and putting them into two separate larger pots. And there's lots of new growth that's happening on them. They're both doing really, really well. And so you could end up putting both of these into your garden. You could rip them once again when you do transplant. Or the thing that I, of course, like to recommend to folks is pass that gift of gardening along to someone. Once you have enough plants, give those extra as a way to individuals in your life so that they can be getting into gardening as well. And so with that complete, to begin wrapping up the video, we're going to fast forward one more time to one week further from now, just to see how these babies are doing as they continue to settle into this new home. All right, folks, so it is 14 days since potting up and our babies are thriving. All right, and so as we can see, the babies are absolutely thriving just 14 days after potting them up into these larger temporary homes. And so I really hope that this video has helped showed you really just kind of how simple it is to pot up your plant babies and also how big of a difference or impact it has on them growing to that next stage. And so all that we do from here is let them continue to hang out underneath the grow lights for 12 to 13 hours per day until it gets warm enough outside to be transplanted them. So for our warmer weather crops like our tomatoes, we're looking for an average nighttime low of 10 Celsius. And then for our cool weather crops such as our kale, we can move those out when the average nighttime low is at 8 Celsius. But folks, we're going to cover off on all of that in some upcoming videos. This is everything that I wanted to cover off on when it comes to potting up our plant babies. If you do have any questions, leave those down in the comments here and I'll get a response to you super quickly. Otherwise, you got everything that you need. Go get those hands dirty. I'll catch you soon.